In general, uh, what we know is that if you're low fitness, you have a very high risk of death and disease. And if you're at high fitness, you have a very low risk of what, you might ask? Untimely death, coronary vascular disease, hypertension, stroke, metabolic disorders, type 2 diabetes, improved bone health, impaired mental status, impaired cognitive ability, pardon me, impaired bone health, some cancers, and impaired joint health. This is level 1 and level 2 evidence. So why am I telling you all this? What does this have to do with moving kids, right? What does it have to do? Well, first, this isn't specific to any one population. It holds for males, females, people with different ages, people with disabilities, people of different racial and, and ethnic groups. So movement is actually medicine. I actually think it could be considered green medicine or sustainable medicine. I haven't heard that term yet, but if you don't have to go buy runners, I mean, it literally is sustainable medicine. And it can be done with little or no side effects if you start slowly and progress gradually, <laughs> right? Little or no side effects. Uh, there are a lot of people today running that are going to have some side effects. But. <laughs> but the point is it's not, about, it's not necessarily about how long we live either, right? It's about how well we live. So. I'm not going to graph you to death, this will probably be my last little figure, but, but there's a theory called the compression of morbidity. A guy named Fries, ironically, from Harvard, proposed this in 1980. It's true. Um, and, and what he, I'll tell you what the compression of morbidity is all about. Basically, we, we, we all are born free from disease with no morbidity above the green line, and we all have to die, right? And, it, and as we age, our lifestyles have an impact on what happens to us. So for physically inactive, the, as the theory goes, and it's been supported by numerous studies, is that if we're physically inactive, we spend a, a large part of our life in morbidity, right? It's, my grandma smoked for, you know, 50 years and drank whiskey. Yeah, but did you hear every morning for the last 30 years? That, you know, so the, the idea is that, yeah, this person could live, but they're going to live with a low quality of life, diseased, probably, and it's uncomfortable. And it's expensive. And uh, conversely, if we're physically active, as the theory goes, we spend a lot more of our life out of morbidity and a very little amount of time being sick. So it's, it's, it's not just about living longer. It's about living better, right? So it's clear. We need to move for our health, right? Willing, knowing is not enough. We must apply. Willing is not enough. We must do, right? But I think as teachers, what, what the message here is is, Self-care is critical, right? In order for you to share your gifts or be your best selves as teachers, elders, parents, husbands, wives, brothers, or sisters, we actually need to take care of ourselves first. We have to have that enlightened self-interest. We need to move. And movement is something we have control over. So move for yourself, move for your loved ones, right? And move for your students. Move for them. <laughs>